and welcome to Learning for Love, Lessons for Life. I'm Lisa Jaworski, and I'm looking so forward to today's episode where we're talking about living life the way you want to be remembered. I don't know if you've thought about it that way before, but I have two special guests who are here to share a little bit about their own experiences, both personal and professional, to help us make sense of how we can live the way we want to be remembered and sharing that legacy. How do we build a legacy in order to, to move on and be remembered later on by our family and the loved ones that we have? So uh, I have Kevin Ballmer, who's going to join us a little later on in the episode. And to start, we have Jocelyn Morwood de Groot. And I am so looking forward to our conversation, Jocelyn. You and I have just met not too long ago. And from what I've heard about you, you have so much to share on this topic. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, Lisa. <laughs> so I wondered, because this show is all about what I call the sandwich generation, so really thinking about how we can best care for ourselves when life seems to get pretty busy and overwhelming at times with caring for the people who we love so much. So whether it's parents or, or children or people in our work lives that we're caring for, um, sometimes that can be a lot. And so I wondered if you could just relate that topic to your own experiences and share your journey with us. Absolutely. Um, I know you and I chatted about this and, um, uh, you know, sandwich generation, you know, I could have had that stamped on my forehead over the last four or five years. Um, I, I found myself in a circumstance where, uh, you know, my mom was quite unwell. She had been diagnosed with cancer in 2013. And it was right around the same time, um, you know, my boys were starting to grow up. I have two sons and my older son was getting ready to head off to his second year university or right around that time he was heading off. And, uh, you know, my younger son was 16 and, you know, all those teenage kind of things happening. And over the period of the, the following, you know, four years, essentially, um, you know, my mom's illness progressed and uh, and then both my sons ended up moving away out to the west coast and running a business here at our restaurant i had also met a wonderful new man so running a business with my husband because i got married within that same time frame um, my children moving away and it, and you know honestly you know maybe a little bit of too much information but also like navigating a little bit of menopause <laughs> at the beginning of these uh, changes of life yeah good so um, it was really it was a lot and uh, you know I didn't have any framework or insight around being able to navigate all of these changes that were just like pouring into my life and pouring out of my life all at the same time yeah. um, so I really had to delve in deep to my own tool belt and um, and you know, insight and wisdom and learning that uh, that I had had the good fortune to bring along with me, but also just like kind of traverse as it came. Yeah. yeah. So I felt like the center of a very squished sandwich. Right. So you get it. You get what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the fact. You know what I have? We haven't really talked about yet on these shows is um, the empty nest piece. And I think that's probably something I haven't had to experience yet, but I'm sure that is quite a transition on kind of your way of thinking and how you move forward. And it's a, I'm sure it's a bit of a loss in a sense. Oh yeah. So within literally within a 12 hour period, and this was after I met my soon to be husband. Um, but within a 12 hour period, my older son left with his girlfriend for their third year university and he took my dog <laughs> took my dog I was adding insult to injury and 12 hours later my younger son I had to take him to the train station and he took a train and went to visit his brother but then flew out west to move away wow and that same day I moved in with my soon-to-be husband holy so it was like entirely like lost essentially and then gained simultaneously 
you know, and trying to just navigate that. I was actually just talking about that to someone today. And I said, you know, I remember that period of time and I would wake up in the morning and I'd just be like cranky. I would just be like, I'm just cranky. I don't know why I'm cranky. And then my husband would say, you know, do you need to call, you know, my older son is Sawyer. Or do you need to call Chase, my younger son? And I'd be like, oh. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. I just miss them. Yeah. I miss my dog, you know? And then and then within a few years after that, you know, then my mom passed away. And then it was like, you know, I miss my dog. I miss my kids. I miss my mom. Like, you really start to realize how these changes in your life, as much as on some levels, they're, they're just natural. It's the thing that happens, you know? Kids grow up and they move away. Parents pass away yeah but when you're in the middle of it it's it's not easy to navigate no it's not it's not and the fact that you have at least it sounds like you have a good sounding board to say hey maybe this is an, an idea maybe this is what you need to do what oh yeah what you find helps you like what helps you through those situations like that when you know, everything's kind of in a bit of a turmoil. What helps you through? Like what's helped you build your resilience to keep going forward? You know, I'm really fortunate um, that I do have a support system in my life. You know, my siblings and I are very close to that. Um, I have a really wonderful relationship with both my sons and obviously my husband. But I also, like I said, I have my own tool belt. So, um, you know, I, I teach yoga and Tai Chi and Qigong. And, and I'm very much about working with the energies of the body in order to check in to what I'm feeling and where I'm feeling it, how to navigate my own emotional state and kind of discern, like, what is it I'm feeling? Is it sadness or is it just like, you know, I, I'm focusing too much on something that has drawn my attention away from what's present in my life right now, right. what I can be grateful for. So I really do always return to, whoa, you have a magical and, and wonderful life, Jocelyn. Yeah. These externalities of people moving on or, or making choices that, you know, make them not present in your physical reality at any given moment, that doesn't take away from who I am and the life that I have been so fortunate to live. And, and so I just come back to that. I really just come back to my own gratitude. I come back to my own good fortune. And then where can I connect with other people on that level? Yeah, that's awesome. So there's so many, so many questions I have for you, but I'm not sure which one to focus in on. I'm wondering, you and I talked a bit about your father and kind of how that was an inspiration for you. And since we're talking about yeah. living life the way you want to be remembered, I wonder, because I know that you'll connect the dots with where I'm going with that. Can you share yeah. a little bit about his legacy? Absolutely. So um, my father was a pilot and um, he, would, I, he was my hero for my whole life. I had a, a wonderful relationship with both my parents, but my father, there was just something special. I take after him in so many ways. And we had a really amazing understanding, like from day one. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, when I was 21 years old, um, my dad died in a plane crash. And it, it was really traumatic. It was, you know, some people will remember it. it. It was the second large plane crash on Canadian soil up in Dryden, Ontario. And, um, and it was horrific. And, uh, you know, he was in my life and then gone the next day. And then there was a four-year inquiry because he wasn't the only one who died. There were 24 people who passed away um, from that crash. And so it was devastating. And, and like, you know, like a, a dagger in your heart for a very, very long time. But after this inquiry, it was done through the, um, you know, through the Canadian government. Um, there were some outcomes from that inquiry. And those outcomes changed the air worldwide, industry-wide. So two of those main protocols that came from this crash and the, um, the inquiry into the crash. One was that um, de-icing protocols were changed right. so that 
you know, the way that they did the de-icing on my father's plane and what ultimately caused the plane to not become airborne, that, you know, they took all of these precautionary measures and changed the protocols so that that wouldn't happen again. Wow. And so anytime anybody gets on a plane now, those are in place. And the other one that they, that they put into play was communication between the flight attendants in the back of the in the cockpit. So now a flight attendant in the back of the plane who notices something can actually abort the the takeoff and say, you know, this plane is now grounded. And that was not the case prior to this. And so when I think about for my life, I feel really, really grateful that, you know, this man who was my everything, my hero, became a hero in his own demise. And, um, and that, that legacy not only lives on in the world through all of these changes in airline protocol, but it lives on in me too. And so it's given me this, this uh, desire, this kind of drive to my own legacy in, as I live and breathe and, you know, hopefully not have to wait until after I kick the bucket. Um, but that it's something that I can bring into everything that I do in my life. And, and then having been sad and been part of that, it, it makes it real for me. Yeah. So I'm really grateful that, That's you awesome. know, I'm not my dad, but I'm super grateful. This, this is something that has come from something that is, was really tragic. Exactly. You've turned, you've turned something that was such a loss for you into something where you'll always remember him and, and carry on like what, like how you were mentioning and, and make sure that his passing wasn't in vain, that you will exactly buy that. Right. And, and pass that on as an inspiration to others. Thank you so much. I'm hoping that you'll stick around while I'm I will. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to bring Kevin on. And Kevin, um, I'm just interested, first of all, I'll, I'll explain the reason why I wanted to have you on. But I'm wondering first, if you have any thoughts from what Jocelyn shared. I can't believe that her son took her dog. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's, I was really interested. Um, I've been really lucky enough to uh, have had an extended conversation with Jocelyn and Wayne uh, on my podcast. Uh, gosh, it was two or three months ago that we did that. But it's uh, it's neat to learn new things about people, especially those whom you admire. And I certainly admire Jocelyn and, and yourself a lot. And it's I, I think it's really interesting to see the connections that we have um, to to those who come before us and how those inform our personalities. I mean, you were asking before we started, Lisa, about the studio setup I have here. This right, yeah. this, this color is called black licorice and the reason why i chose that is because of the name i wanted a, a like a dark color but there I, I thought there was one shade of black i wanted black so that these sound panels would blend in but apparently uh, there are many 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 different dozens of shades of black and charcoal and i was going through all of these uh, early in the pandemic and how do you choose a black and it was actually my mother who's 74 now who said, oh, you've got to take a look at this one, Kevin. We were going through lists on the home hardware website. She said, it's called black licorice. And I said, I don't need to see it. That's it. Oh. And the reason why is because my hero, my late grandpa Newkirk, my maternal grandfather, used to love those black licorice pipes. Oh, yeah. You can still find them some at some places at some of those traditional candy stores. And I've got photos of him with this Cheshire cat grin and the black licorice pipe. And so I've, <laughs> I've gotten into calling this the black licorice studios. I don't know if you can see, I've got a little plant pot beside me yeah, with a little red cardinal because every time I see a red cardinal, like I did this morning when I was out on the back deck doing a little bit of yoga and a red cardinal flies up, I always think that that's my grandmother who is wow. the, the, uh, was the wife, is the wife to the other person that I just mentioned. And there's a real deep connection there. And I feel like they're with me. And I feel like there are so many things that I wish I could talk to my grandpa about now that I'm at the stage of life that I'm, I'm at now. Because when he left us, um, I was still in my first marriage. I was, there were so many things that I hadn't experienced that I have now that I'd love to talk to him about person to person yeah. 
yeah. life experience to life experience and hear his perspective as opposed to grandson to grandfather in a kind of, you know, child and, and uh, influence right. kind of a, of a role. Yeah. Um, so it's, I think it's interesting also with what Jocelyn said about just how we, what we're used to and, and, and our sense of identity and our sense of balance of the, the people that we're used to being and the roles and how those kind of shift and change as, as we go through our journey and, uh, and your perspective changes. Absolutely. Um, and so for me, I've been able to get through some of the challenges that I've had in my life. It's brought me a lot closer to my own parents because I see them more as, as other people and we relate as, as, as people um, more than just father, son, or, or mother and son. So it's neat how that all evolves as we go, I think. Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm sure I'm sure the two of you can relate, and I can ask Jocelyn after, but I think it's funny how even in our household, you know, my husband will go, you just wait when you get to be our age. And I think, I remember, you know, I remember my parents saying that when I was little, but there gets to be a point where you, you do, you kind of get it and you start to think, man, there's, I don't know, for me, I kind of look back and think, I, I probably did some things that maybe I shouldn't have done, or maybe I owe a couple of apologies, but it's all learning as you go. And it's, that's, I think that's why I'm so passionate now about, you know, finding out about other people's stories is because you don't know until you're older and then you realize that I just I'm so hungry for this knowledge and people who have been there that and I, I know that I will get there and that there will be more challenges but I um I don't know I just admired people's journeys and they're all so unique and different right for us to learn from absolutely and it'll be something once we reach a certain stage of our journey our our <laughs> younger yeah. members of our families might argue that we're already there but I was just having a conversation about that with my kids the other day. So I have two boys, they're 17 and 14 respectively. And we were just discussing a, a personality trait related to someone who is more senior in our family and, and how we were going to meet that with what we would call compassion from our perspective of things. And right. <laughs> I was saying, Hey guys, it's going to be something with me too. If I'm lucky enough to stick around long enough, you're going to have the same situation with me as I'm having with this, this other, <laughs> it'll be something. And, uh, but the other thing that I yeah. think is, is interesting with that is um, as the dialogue opens up, I, I have a sense that there is more open dialogue b between the generations than maybe there was mm -hmm. two or three or four generations ago. So for instance, I'll have long, long talks with mom. I mean, she and I are our best buds and, and she'll acknowledge, she talks to, to me about things and we have conversations in a deep way about things that she would never have talked to her own mother about. And that's not to talk right. down on or criticize my grandmother in, in any fashion, but we're all doing the best we can with, with what we know and we can't teach yeah. what we don't know, but it seems to me there's a deeper level of kind of self-awareness and, and more universal emotional intelligence. My kids are decades ahead of where, where I was and am. And so that makes me hopeful for the future as we continue to <laughs> hopefully evolve yeah, <laughs> emotionally right. as a species. You're right. but I, I have thought about that before. Yeah. I find that really interesting to, to, to be able to be a witness and participant to that evolution. That's a good point. I also wanted you to join me today because of your work with Mo Mondays and you hosting. And I know you just had your first, you know, event back up and running in real, real life on Monday. But I wanted to really ask from your experience with it so far, do you find, are there any benefits or what would you say you notice from the experience of sharing your story with others i know you've had lots of guests on have you ever talked to them after the fact is it like i almost wonder if it, if you kind of have this opportunity to process emotions or if you know you feel a sense of relief or you tell me is there tell me more about that all of that what i've learned <laughs> is, is uh we don't understand how powerful we are and we don't understand how much we have to offer just by being exactly who we are and I'm used 
to hearing now, Lisa, things like, I, I don't have anything to share that anyone's going to be interested in. I don't have a story that, that yes. other people could relate to. Why would anyone want to hear from me? And that I hear most often from people that I reach out to, that I seek out to ask to, to take the stage and share. And I have found that some degree of that feeling internally seems to be universal to some degree. The next level of, of things that, that I've seen happen is that, you know, a lot of us struggle to tell the people that we're closest to that we love them up to including the people that we see in the mirror. A lot of us don't even feel that that's a natural thing to say. So to stand under the lights and on a stage and share something that is inherently rather personal with anyone, let alone with people that you don't know, Right. is not necessarily uh, what a lot of people I think would consider a, a natural and normal thing to do. But when you do it and it's met with appreciation right in that moment, mm-hmm. and then you feel the energy of that appreciation being sent back to you, that blows people's circuits emotionally. And oh. you mentioned and asked, do you talk to people the next day? Do you follow up? I've gotten in the habit of making sure that I check in on on most of them. Because I get a lot of uh, people that say that they're, you know, they're in tears or they're still in pajamas or that they can't even keep up with the oh. notes that they get from people. Uh, I've had my own oh, sweetheart, wow. Caroline, when she did a talk in, in March, our last show before the pandemic shut us down, she had all kinds of members of her family and that when she shared her story that, that, that did not know the level of experiences that she'd had and what she went through. And... And that impacted their experience. There were changes made in other people's lives because they were so inspired and moved by what they heard from someone that they love and thought they knew better than than they did. And I think that's all evidence of it's a real easy trap for us to feel like we need to reach to be something that we aren't. Um, Or that if we share some of those things that we might consider to be self-doubts or warts or failures or any of those things, because we're maybe concerned that if we reveal those things, it'll push people further away. I'm quite satisfied that it's the opposite that's true. It's that it's not about woe is me or here's the hard thing I've gone through, but just a shared experience to share learning and try to empower each other pulls us closer together. There's an immediate relatability, I think, in the human experience with that. And it's really fun to be a part of. Oh, thank you. I I completely agree. And that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. (laughs) And not exactly those words, but I knew you'd make it work. I'm going to bring back on Jocelyn to join us because I have one question. I know we've, we've packed a lot in, I think, and we've hit everything I wanted to hit. So Jocelyn and Kevin, I want to ask you both the same question. If you could try to give me kind of a condensed version or a one sentence answer to this question, what keeps you living the way you want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered when, when all is said and done? Um, Jocelyn. Uh, in one more, one sentence. Um, you know, as far as I know, this is the only life I got, you know, there's, there's philosophies that speak to lots of other lives and, and maybe that's true, but right now this is the only one I got that I'm aware of. And, uh, why wouldn't I endeavor to my fullest ability to live this life fully? And, and be the most uh, compassionate, conscious, aware, uh, connected, loving human being that I could be. Yeah, living Why life wouldn't to the I? fullest. I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah, well said, well said for sure. Kevin, what about you? I think, especially when I think about my kids, I I hope that they see me now and will see me as somebody who was always open to learning and didn't run from stuff that he needed to face on his own. That was constantly looking to try to expand and grow not only into his own potential, but to, to do his best to, to try to encourage and, and inspire other people to do that as well, not to be any version of, of any, thing anyone else has set out but just for them to to really 
do their own version of what I think Jocelyn just described and live their life fully, whatever that means to them. Right. You know, I think we're all looking for, for guidance and, um, and, and we can pick up a lot of clues from each other, but ultimately I think it's inside of us um, to find out what that, that really means and to just be open to the, the constant pursuit of that and taking responsibility and, and, you know, doing his best to try to, help others live and work happy as much as possible. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Living life to the fullest is what, whatever that means to you and being able to give back and help others in whatever way makes sense for us. I think uh, that there's no, there's no perfect answer. There's no, there's no package on this is where you need to fit into. And that's how things need to be done. We're all just so different and unique. Hopefully we can tap into those strengths for ourselves and for others too. Wow. Well, thank you so much to both of you for joining me today. That was incredible. And that was exactly what I was hoping. Uh, and I, I just feel blessed that you both join me and take the time to be a part of this show. And I know that others will get just as much out of it as, as I have. So I really appreciate you both being with me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. It was my pleasure. Yeah, it was great to see both of you, Jocelyn and Lisa. Yeah. Wish you wish you all the best and hope we get to see you both in person sooner than later. Much love to you both. I know, right? <laughs> all of this is over and done with. We need to all be in the same room at some point. Yeah, Absolutely. That's right. that's right. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. This is Learning for Love, Lessons for Life, and I'll look forward to the next time I see you. Take care.